This video uses the magic of computer graphics to show visually how well various voting methods actually work in terms of electing someone who represents the electorate. But it turns out our current system and a bunch of other proposed systems don't actually do very well in terms of accurately representing the will of the voters. So let's just imagine we have two candidates, you know, your typical red and blue. They're represented by colored circles in this virtual two-dimensional political spectrum. Now we'll just add a single voter who gets to determine the winner of the election. And in this simulation, the voter just picks whichever candidate is closest. As the voter moves politically closer to the other candidate, that candidate becomes the winner. Now we're going to paint the whole background with whichever candidate would win when the voter is, is at each point in the political spectrum. We can add candidates. Now there are three or four or five. And the winner of the election at each point is just whichever candidate is closest to that single voter that's picking the winner. As we animate the candidates through the political spectrum, uh, this makes for pretty pictures, but it's not particularly useful. We want to know how voting systems perform when there's more than just one voter. So now, instead of just having one voter at each point, we'll run an election of about 4,000 voters arranged in a random Gaussian distribution around that point. So again, the, the center of public opinion hasn't changed. There's just now um, many more voters, and we'll run through a bunch of different voting systems to see how those voting systems perform in terms of creating representative outcomes. We'll look at a few different ones. So plurality, that's the current system that we use uh, here in the US and in most uh, venues. We'll also look at instant runoff voting. Sometimes people call that ranked choice voting. Uh, it's used in about a dozen cities in the US and Maine just passed it statewide. We'll look at score voting. Um, so ranked choice lets you rank candidates one, two, three. Score voting lets you score them uh, zero to five or zero to nine. Um, and then finally, we'll look at score runoff voting, also known as star voting, which is starts with score voting and then adds an automatic runoff step uh, to correct distortion. So as you can see with two candidates, all of the voting methods behave the same and produce results that make sense. Uh, in all the systems, the candidate closest to the center of public opinion wins, which means, which, which matches what would happen if there's just a single voter right at the center of public opinion. What happens when we add a third candidate? Well, shit breaks. Turns out creating a voting method that is actually representative is a non-trivial task every time there are more than two candidates. Plurality voting can easily squeeze out a candidate in the middle of the field. You can see that the win region for this yellow candidate is dramatically diminished. That candidate doesn't even win in elections when, when they're right at the very center of public opinion because of where they are relative to the other candidates. This is a, this is a very visual way to demonstrate what, what's known as the spoiler effect, where the presence of a, a spoiler candidate in the race can prevent the candidate who otherwise should have won from winning. So you can see that when the electorate is closer to yellow on the blue side of the red-blue divide, red acts as a spoiler. And when the electorate is closer to yellow on the red side, blue acts as a spoiler. In both cases, preventing the most representative candidate from winning. Ranked choice voting has much of the same spoiler center squeeze dynamic that plagues our current voting system. Because of the peculiar way instant runoff is tabulated, the second choices of only some of the voters are taken into account. Far from being a cure for the fundamental ill of our democratic process, instant runoff simply hides the problem behind a complex and error-prone counting mechanism. Score voting actually has the opposite effect. Candidates actually benefit by being politically in between the other candidates. This center expansion can likewise often result in candidates losing even when public opinion is centered directly on them. Star voting corrects the distortion present in score voting and consistently comes closest to the ideal one voter model. As we add more candidates, the problems with plurality, IRV, and score become more pronounced to the point where IRV in particular produces just these really strange results. And now we'll look at these images again, highlighting the areas that are different from the ideal model. So we can see really clearly where they fail. The intensity of the different image is based on how much the voting system got it wrong. So 
green means that it you know kind of picked a candidate that's pretty close to the right candidate. Uh, red means just picked there was a much better candidate, much closer to the center of public opinion that the system missed. And once again, you can see the serious problems present, particularly in plurality and instant runoff, less for score and substantially diminished in star voting. This visualization begins to get at the much more sophisticated voting method simulation work, uh, such as uh, Warren Smith's Bayesian regret models or Jameson Quinn's voter satisfaction efficiency, uh, where, where they have much more complex distributions of voters uh, in, and strategy models where you have a certain number of voters behaving strategically and not. What's interesting about that is that those simulations, those much more sophisticated simulations, actually come up with very similar results uh, in terms of the four systems presented here. So what do you think? Sound off in the comments down below. Uh, and of course, you can learn more about star voting and the push to bring it to public elections at the Equal Vote website.